the net. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there's like a tiny little bit. Just a drop or two. It takes a little while to, you have to tab it. That's good. There you go. Close it and shake it. Yellow. So what is that? That's salt. That's salt. Okay, let's not take bath salts. <laughs> Holy shit, we just wasted like a hundred bucks. That's, I'm fine with that. I'd rather not take bath salts. Yeah, that's so <laughs> f***ed. Great, thank you. I feel like this was worth our time. <sighs> yeah. I am Adam Ochter, and I'm the founder of the Bunk Police. I uh, am from Texas. I am an Eagle Scout, trying to do a good thing for the planet. It's a company that distributes test kits so people can make sure that their drugs are what they intend to take and not something that's going to kill them. They're really easy. You just take a little bit of your substance, put it into a test tube, add a little bit of liquid, it changes colors and you match it to a chart, that's it. I would say overall at the majority of US music festivals we're looking at more than 50% are not pure and that's a conservative estimate. And by not pure I mean that they've been caught with something. We have all kinds of different reactions from you know people purchasing these kits. The vast majority are just surprised when they find out that it's not, you know, that they're angry, confused. I just can't understand how somebody would make that decision knowing that it's not safe and then continuing down that path. We do deal with dealers relatively often as well and usually they're much more receptive. I've watched a dealer take $10,000 worth of product and just throw it into a port -a john Detroit what the f and some, some white sass. Some more white sass. Some more moon rocks. This is a little bit different. It's from Germany. You gotta let me get some of this. Alright. That is just about as clean a reaction as you can expect from the human. You know, this whole thing didn't really start by accident. I was looking for something along these lines. I wanted to make my mark on the world, and this just dropped into my lap. You know, just on a whim, I'm, I'm looking around the net, and I find uh, this forensic supply company, and they sell to the police, and it's actually police only. But I tried to order anyways, and the order went through, and they showed up in my house. So I took these to the next festival that I went to and discovered something you know, very alarming. As it turns out, most of the MDMA in particular at this event was synthetic cathinones. Uh, most people know them as bath salts. Just put one of each, just a little bit. This is the MDMA I bought off. This guy, came, this guy came around, he told us, he tested it, and yeah, and then this stuff we tested and we don't have Clue what it yeah. is. MDVP. MDVP, and that's yep. a fucking rock. Yeah. I'm just gonna toss that back in there. Okay. I'm gonna test these two, and then I'm gonna put the kit next to it so you can see. Okay, that is bath salts. You can see it's fizzing yellow. If you look at this, all yellow is bath salts. This is clear and is fizzing up, which means it doesn't even register on here. No one even knows what it is. It could be M MDVP, it could be a number of things. And these are being sold as MDMA. Yeah. Yep. Beyond noticing the problem, I also noticed that there was a huge demand for them. You know, people were lining up all day into the night trying to get these things. And I only had a, you know, a certain amount and I went through them really quickly. So I you know, continued going to music festivals, purchased you know, thousands of additional kits and did testing for free. Um, you know, people would give me donations, but I was just losing a ton of money every single event. Well, I ran into a chemist, and she is just, you know, rock star, works at, you know, a huge government lab, and she was like, you know, these things are not that difficult to make. What you should do is you should find all of the patents for the police supply ones. We'll see how to reverse engineer them and tweak them so that we're not violating those products or those patents, and we'll release our own. Oh, it's just been exponential since then. You know, originally I just wanted to have one test kit. We now have eight, you know, plus our thin layer chromatography system for mixed substances. 
This right here is our brand new fentanyl test kit meant to kind of address the opioid epidemic. And as you can see, it's just a little tiny strip, kind of like a pregnancy test, and it works in almost exactly the same way. The subject of fentanyl is, is massive at this point. You know, people are dying, you know, not by the dozens, but by the tens of thousands across the U.S. and especially Canada. So we've actually been working on a solution to this problem for years. And in fact, that's what our thin layer chromatography kit was supposed to accomplish in the first place. And so our goal is to distribute as many of these fentanyl test kits as possible and educate them about their use. So this one works about the same way as the marquee. Just add a little bit of that. All right, now as you can see, it is turning a pink color very fast. So that is the way DMT would react, or very similar to the way DMT would react. At first we had all of our substances up in Belgium, about 120 of them. And we realized that the person that had them was developing a drug problem. Um, so we needed to immediately, I needed to immediately fly out there, get them, and then bring them elsewhere down to Spain. Now you can imagine trying to smuggle a hundred and some odd different samples of illegal drugs across, you know, through Belgium, across the Belgium-France border, through all of France, across the France-Spain border, and then all the way over to Catalonia. Uh, I mean, it was nerve-wracking. I mean, uh, yeah. And I, I was actually thoroughly inspected by passport control at one point, and they could tell that I was nervous, and I somehow managed to play it off before they got into my bags. Did not use any of these substances, just in case people were wondering. <laughs> just a little champagne. Over the course of the next four years, we acquired every single substance on the market, totaling 275. And that was an immense undertaking. That's not just 275 orders from a sketchy website. That's tracking down the guy that is actually manufacturing it in the country that he's in, convincing him, you know, that we need to have the most up-to-date substances that he's producing so that we can be ahead of the curve. The market is just flooded with these things and many of them are not very effective and many of them are not safe whatsoever. Every week, you know, we're seeing a couple more. There are some periods that we've gone through where there will be dozens um, that'll come out in the same week. And it's, it's a vast market uh, that just keeps, that keeps exponentiating spitting these things out. We really are already hitting the demographic that we, we had originally gone out to appeal to. But there are so many other people um, in subcultures that we haven't been able to appeal to yet. You know, there are your gutter punks that are taking meth. You know, there's your um, CEOs that are doing a bunch of cocaine, you know, like also, you know, the guy shooting up heroin on the side of the street. Like we're trying to reach all of these people. It's just figuring out how. You can even just scrape together the powder. Yeah. No way. So I'm about to get that lot of money back. So are you. What makes it worth it is knowing, you know, how many lives I'm able to change. A lot of people um, kind of use, you know, overdoses and, and, and deaths as the barometer for you know, how bad the drug problem is, but that's not the only facet to this. I think about lives and minds. You know, you can damage yourself physically, you know, for the rest of your life, just taking one substance. I've been pulled over uh, with massive amounts of test kits on me multiple times, one of them being this year on the way to Burning Man. 
Uh, we were pulled over for not having our headlights on. So they took us out of the vehicle and they found 300 test kits in a duffel bag. And there were seven police officers there. It was a drug task force. They had a drug dog and the whole nine yards. They actually just kind of crowded everybody around and were like laughing and showing each other this thing. And apparently they've been very common, you know, which makes me happy because you know, our products getting out there. It's not just us anymore. There are, we have 35 different competitors worldwide. So, you know, we've, we've spurred an industry or we've helped spurred an industry. So they are federally legal. Um, they're certainly legal in every sense in Europe and many, many other countries. Uh, they're also legal in 13 states um, here in the U.S. The other 37 states have paraphernalia laws that vary widely and most of them have not been updated since the 80s or 90s. And that's one of the main reasons why we moved to Slovenia. What we do is not only legal, but encouraged by the government. Um, you know, in Slovenia, you can bring your bag of drugs to a brick and mortar facility, have them evaluate it, and they'll give it back to you and give you as much information as they can about how to use it safely. You know, we're not able to keep uh, drugs out of solitary confinement in a federal penitentiary. And you know, how, how are we ever going to keep it out of a club or a music festival or off of the streets? It's just impossible. We need to, to put the best minds uh, in the industry on this and, and figure out what, it, what a better plan would be because people are dying. Ideally, I would very much like to have um, you know, our, our simple products in the same sort of vending machines that you'd find condoms in or you know, whatever else in, in bathrooms at clubs. Um, you know, and, and I don't see any reason why this these sort of things can't be offered by, say, the clinic at colleges or something like that. That's, that's where I see it going. And of course, they need to be in every smoke shop in the U.S. and internationally. They, they're very important and, you know, I'd say more important than anything else they're selling in a place like that. It's necessary. At this point, I think I have had the impact that I wanted to have on the world. I think I, you know, I can be confident that I've changed lives and maybe, hopefully, I have saved one or two, you know, along the way.